that plane is about to hit those birds or the birds are about to hit the plane. It just missed them by by mere feet, or at least that's what it appeared to look like from my angle. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. A lot of people fly into the Central Florida area on a daily basis, and why not? There is a heck of a lot of fun things to do. Walt Disney World, Busch Gardens, SeaWorld, Universal Studios, and a plethora of other things. But there's a lot of stuff more low-key, more peaceful, more <sighs> a breath of fresh air away from some of those busy theme parks in the same neck of the woods. That's good. It's my second channel, Daily Vlog Channel. It's the Daily Woo. Today, I wanna check out Pioneer Village at Shingle Creek, located at 2491 Bab Road. And just to give you a little perspective of what else is on the property here, down this road where you see the sign that says dead end off there in the distance, a lot of local legends say that road and those woods are haunted. And it was not far from that very spot where I made the announcement years ago that I had been trespassed from Walt Disney World, which has of course now been lifted. I've talked about that in the past. But those two key points aside, I have never ever wandered the rest of this premises. I gotta check this out, Doc. In the early 1900s, the Babb family settled along Shingle Creek on this property. Once roads and bridges were established, the names and locations faded into history, but were a time essential to the creation of the communities of Shingle Creek and Kissimmee. It is a recreation of the period from 1880 to 1916, and this photo is of Narcusi, Florida, which is where I was yesterday for that reenactment, and that's the old Main Street, very similar to what they have recreated here. I would have never known that if it wasn't for that young lad right there holding the sign. Thanks, buddy. I stand corrected. This homestead is an original house. This church, of course, is not. It's being built from scratch. But this little cabin, that was also transported all the way from the other side of Osceola County. There was an entire family reared inside that building the homestead of James C. Tyson. And even though that is the correct terminology when you raise a family and kids, I can see why we don't really use that wording much anymore. After a long day on the farm, I bet it was nice to sit on the porch and enjoy the breeze. One day I'll have a porch and some rocking chairs just like this. One day. Very humble accommodations to say the least. By today's standards, this would be an efficiency apartment. The only difference being an entire family lived in this one, well, one and a half room place. You see the washboard in the tub there and an ironing board. Do people still iron their clothes? And the reason I'm not walking over there, there's this line here that says, please do not cross. You can't go past there. Another interesting observation I just had, when we think of an old-timey church, we think of the one that they are creating right here. But look at this. First Christian church circa 1883, the First Baptist Church. Look at that. It's just made out of, it made out of foliage. Which pretty much drives the point home. A church is not a building, and a home is not a house. It's the contents thereof, not the facade. And I guess around that time frame, that sort of construction material was commonly used, especially by the Seminole Indians, according to this sign. There was a song, I can't remember who sang it, about the Floridian Seminole Indians. Blow, blow, Seminole wind. Blow like you're ever gonna blow. Who sang that song? They use these for a wide variety of reasons, either to cook, to store things, and even to sleep. And the more I look at it, it makes a lot of sense because you have the shelter of the roof, but then you also have the open air, so you get a breezeway through there, so it feels pretty good to spend the night under one of those. The only issue I would have would be the mosquitoes. If there is one of those creatures in the room, it will be on my arm embedding its nostril-like fangs into my bloodstream. In the late 1880s, these gentlemen on horseback would set up something called a cow camp, similar to what we are looking at here. 
and it says they would be in the saddle up to 12 hours a day. When I'm driving around in large Marge, a rental car, or even my former van, I have like a 10 hour driving cutoff limit. That's when I start to get a little bit loopy and my mind starts playing tricks on me. Imagine being in a saddle two hours longer than that and slightly a little bit less comfortable. This is a sugar cane grinder. You would hook up the end of that wooden pole onto the horse and the horse would walk around in a circle, thus churning and crushing the sugar cane, which would be wedged inside that metal container there in the center. And you gotta wonder what all these tourists on their way to Florida are thinking, looking down from the airplane, and they see this. They thought they were gonna see Cinderella Castle, but they're seeing old Florida. They're very confused right now. And you couldn't really be a Florida pioneer without a cattle barn. Well, I guess you could have been, but you would have been probably an outcast if you did not own cattle because that was kind of the thing to do back then. This is where the horses and maybe even some cows hung out. Well, check it out. There's a brand on the ground in the sand. Normally you see a brand on a cow's hide, not in the sand. That's probably better, less painful for the cow. It is incredible how much of an aeronautical thoroughfare this is. And this gate's open. I'm gonna see what's in, you like that word? You like those words I used, aeronautical thoroughfare? That's some big words. I don't think I use them correctly, but it sounded right. You guys ever just make up terminology on your own when you're just hanging out in there and you're just having conversations? Do you ever say something to your friend? You think, that didn't make any sense. But the thing about friendship is, no matter what your buddy says, you just go with it. You just get it. It's a thing called slang. And I like to make up my own slang. Is there a foul slang? I wonder if there's a foul slang. There's a few other people out here. They look a little hungry. I think I'm going to ring the dinner bell. Come and get it! They're not paying it. Nobody even looked over here. That was a complete fail. There are quite a few of these signs saying, please do not cross. And at first I thought it meant, do not go inside the premises and mess with the artifacts. But in reality, you never wanna cross a farmer. Do not double cross a man who works in the field. What did I just say? They should make a movie about that though. Bring Steven Seagal out of retirement. He could be sitting right there, and then his other family members tell him about someone who stabbed him in the back. You don't want to make Steven Seagal upset. Trust me. I believe inside here was where they stored the meat. Oh yeah, look. Country ham. A mild cure Virginia ham that would hang right there on that rope along this wooden pole. They would dangle the ham. And that, didn't, that didn't sound right. Another curious question I have is, what the heck is this? Like, what does this do? Any ideas what this right here is? No idea. This looks like the backside of one of those photo op opportunities where you stick your head and there's characters on the other, wait. There aren't characters on the other side. They've just taken a Sharpie and wrote, I got caught at Pioneer Village, Osceola County, Florida. It kind of works though in its own weird way. Man, these things are so, so uncomfortable. Ah. I know what building this is. I'm looking for that no good cheating blacksmith. Is he in here? Is he in here? No. Why would he be in here, Adam? This is not the blacksmith shop. It's a fruit mechanism. What the heck? This is not what I was looking for. I was told when I entered the property, by the way, it costs $7 to get in here and it helps with upkeep of the property. There's an outhouse here to the left, but I was informed that this building, this structure was also an old homestead. A few books there on the box. No McGuffey readers. I always like to keep an eye out for the old school McGuffey readers. But as par for the course for that time frame, just a little one bedroom place 
with two beds, two twin beds. And if you were one of the few to be a little bit more well off, a little bit more wealthy, you would have a kitchen that was separated from the rest of the house. You'd walk out the bedroom onto the side porch and you would enter into the dining area and where you would prepare the food all right inside here away from the rest of the living quarters. Wait a second. Are those p alive? Wait, those need nutrients. I don't know. Those definitely are not petunias. Oh, this is nice in here. A little living room slash office area. Fancy. I really love the wood flooring as well. And I don't think it's part of the theming for that era. But there's a fire hydrant right there in the mirror. But it's good to have though, especially with all this, all this wood. The schoolhouse is not original. It is a recreation, but a fantastic job. For sure, this is awesome. But once again, don't see any McGuffey readers. Did you hear the echo in there? Kind of spooky. If you would have been hanging around the Village Depot like this back in the late 1800s, you would have seen some beautiful women dressed like that. I really like that era of clothing. I think that's why I like Dapper Day so much. Everyone dressed to the nines in their Sunday best, even if it's not on Sunday. You'd have your suitcases ready to board the train or they would ship citrus out of here, or in this case, fish. They would ship trout on a train? Well, I guess they would. I never, never thought about that, though. And what have we here? Now I have found it. I'm looking for that no good cheating blacksmith. <laughs> that never gets old. Or maybe it does. I've gotten quite adept to shoeing horses and fixing wagons. What about you, lizard? Have you seen him? Have you seen him? I'm looking for that no good cheating blacksmith. I haven't seen him, huh? He's nowhere to be found. He's nowhere to be found. I'll find him. Don't you worry about that. I'll find him. There's this old classic truck just chilling here underneath the shade of the old barn. And there's another one right over there next to the playground. You can barely see it, but it's right there in the corner. Now, for whatever reason, they have deemed this area off limits. But look at that. That's a relic. When I first got here, I showed the address was located on Bab Road. That's because it was named after the Bab family. And it sits on the old orange grove circa 1920, where they had their trees. Orange groves for miles. Lots of vitamin C, which is well needed for the children because when they got out of school, they didn't sit around playing video games. They worked in the fields. Crazy, huh? And I don't know for certain if this was one of their crops because I do not know what the heck type of plant this is. Can you eat these? Are these edible? Or if you consume them, will you have a little bit of a into the wild moment. All in all, a very fantastic place, rich in history. And while you're here, if you stop by, make sure you tell these two I said hello. They had a little store on site. Check out these old bags, like old ads from newspapers. And I picked up this book, Osceola County, The First Hundred Years. I love history, so it's gonna be nice to flip through this and read, read up on some stuff I probably never knew before and i couldn't pass up getting this relic for two dollars this florida orange made of plastic you put baking soda in it as demonstrated on this 1980 style photo of someone with very thin fingers holding the product i've never seen this before and i'm convinced i'm convinced it's almost close to antique in years I love it. I stopped off at Walmart now, and they have one of those crane machines called Grab and Fun. I think I'm gonna go for this green guy right here. I think that works. Get him, get him, yes, yes. No! Wah, wah, wah. 
for anyone who does anything creative, in my case, YouTube videos, maybe you do vlogs or you do semi-regular videos on this platform of YouTube, you know that there is a percentage, usually a very small percentage of people who are overly boisterous and overly vocal about being negative. If you do something, they overanalyze it and they look at the negative aspect versus the positive. And that's human nature for a lot of people. We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it, you're guilty of it, they are guilty of it. Some people have a better filter than others, and some people just let the, their emotions fly on the keyboard. And that's to be expected with the internet. And sometimes that can be a little bit discouraging. Not completely overwhelming discouraging, but sometimes it gets to you a little bit. And I want to share with you an example. Today, I was having lunch with a friend, and we were talking about how the more popular and the more views your YouTube channel gets, you're always going to have a certain demographic, a certain percentage of those watching who are not going to like certain videos, certain content, especially in my situation when I try to mix up the content and always do something a little bit different. Everything from graveyards to historical stuff to sometimes tragic events, to theme parks, the other opposite of the spectrum, the happiest places on earth. I do a whole mishmash of content and not everyone's gonna like one type of content as much as they like another. So I was having lunch with my friend, lunch early dinner today, and we were talking about that. And as I was talking about how sometimes it can bother you a little bit because for me, I try to make everyone happy. I want everyone who comes in contact with what I am presenting out here on the internet to enjoy it, to go away with a smile. And when that does not always happen, sometimes it, it, it makes me frown inside. And as I was telling him this, a little girl, a very young girl, walked up to our table, tapped me on the arm and said, I really like your videos. And I needed to hear that at that point. It was the right exact second, the exact minute in that conversation, in that frame of topic we were discussing. It was the right time for her to walk up. And then after she introduced herself and I introduced myself back to her, her family came over and said how much they liked the content that I am putting out there. So do not ever get discouraged by anyone who is negative or is trying to put you down, someone that is not doing what you are doing and does not share your opinion. It does not necessarily mean that they are wrong and you are right or vice versa. It's just a different of opinion. It's what makes this whole wonderful world go around. Little tip, a little insight from me to you. It was on my mind and I wanted to share that with you. Have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. The vlog is over.